teachers, welcome to our Hispanic Heritage Month. This is going to be a staff interview. I'll be asking you a couple of questions about your background and, the, and your family. Okay? So we're going to begin with what is your name and what role, what is your role at the school? All right, I'll start. Um, I'm Miss Santi Esteban and I teach fifth grade math. All right. I'm Miss Gonzalez and I teach art. All right, thank you. And I, can you please tell me where were you born? So I was actually born in Evansville, Indiana, the middle of the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> and I was born here in South Florida, Miami. All right, thank you. And uh, what is your family's country of origin? So my parents are from Cuba, both my mom and my dad, but all four of my grandparents are actually from Spain. Oh. Well, my family's from Chile. I'm a big mix. My mom is Cuban and my dad is Chilean. Um, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, have you, uh, how long have your parents been in the United States? Do you know if they've been here for uh, how many years? I'll go first. So <laughs> my parents um, came both in the 60s, so they've been here for most of their lives. So my dad has now been here for about 55 years and my mom 50 so the most of the majority of their life has been spent here but they did have to learn english they had to get accustomed to the american culture so they came when they were kids all of that transition and your parents so my mom was born um, in cuba but she was raised in spain so she was born lived in spain for many years and then she moved to the united states when she was like around in high school and then my dad um came from Chile when he was in high school to go to the American. Oh, okay. All right, so um, have you always known English or Spanish? And how did you learn either English or Spanish? So people wouldn't know it now, but my <laughs> first language was Spanish because both of my parents um, didn't speak much English. It was very broken. So I was taught Spanish growing up. However, we lived in the middle of the Midwest where nobody speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. So we had to learn just by going to school and by interacting with the, the kids in our neighborhood to learn English. But now, my Spanish isn't as great as it once was. <laughs> All right, I'm Rick Gonzalez. Okay, so my first language was Spanish, but I would speak Spanish at home and English in school. So that's why I spoke. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, I don't know if you guys know, but what motivated your family to come to the United States? Do you guys know? Um, for my family, they were just seeking a better life. Um, the country of Cuba was under communism. So when un you're under communism, there's a lot of things that you can't do. You don't have the freedom to have your own ideas, your own life or anything of that sort. So my grandparents actually had to be do it the legal way, which is to be a government slave. So he was a slave for four years, um, working in the sugarcane fields of Cuba to be able to legally come over here to the States to make a better life for his family. Okay, so my family, they just came here, well, there's two stories, from my mom when she moved from Spain to America, so it was different. They just came over here for a better life and um, the American dream. And then, <laughs> from my father's story, his parents passed away. So, when he got adop adopted, he moved here to the United States. So, okay, that's very interesting. Every story is different, right? Okay, so um, just thinking about traditions, what would be a tradition that you would like to pass down to your um, family or something that you learn that you still practice from your parents? Any Hispanic traditions? So for my family, um, we like to celebrate Noche Buena, which is on Christmas Eve. In the American culture, Christmas is more of the bigger holiday, but in Cuba and in Spain, we celebrate Noche Buena. So we get together as a family, we roast a cake, we make croquetas, and we just hang out and dance and have a great time. And that's just something I want to pass down to my kids as well. Croqueta! Oh, croqueta! Okay. 
So with my family, I would pass down like the food. Um, I love cooking the cultures of both Cuban and Chilean. So I would like to pass that down. Like the desserts and the sweets like Lafo and Lojas, the lemon Lojas. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm just hungry. <laughs> okay, so um what is what do you think are some things that make um the Hispanics special? Something from our culture that actually makes us special. What do you think? Um I think the way that we have an ability to give and express love in such a open way. You know, you never go a day without kissing your parents, without hugging. We're very emotional. And I think that that's something that's so beautiful to be in tune with your emotions and be able to express that. So I think that's something that's really special. Yes, yes, I would agree with that. Um, but also the culture, because okay, every culture is different in the Hispanic community. The way we speak Spanish is differently in one country than the next. So then when you combine them, it just makes it unique. Exactly. Um, talking about speaking, what is that? Do you know any phrase or any saying that reminds you of your country? So I don't have one that reminds me of my country, but one that reminds me that my grandma used to say. My grandmother was full of phrases that I don't know where she would pull them from. But the one that really resonated with me growing up that makes more sense now, and I might say it wrong, it's El que no te quiere, no te mereces. Yes. Which oh, is those who don't love you don't deserve you. And she used to always tell me that and it took a couple of years but it finally clicked on how important that really is. Alright guys, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, okay? Appreciate okay. you. Thank you.